Tens of thousands of Islamic State militiamen control one-third of the territory of Iraq, as well as one-third of Syria, an area equal to that of England. Their wish is to establish a caliphate led by the Sharia, the Islamic laws, taken from the 7th century. The Iraqi Kurdish soldiers confronting them are also known as the Peshmerga, those who face death. Over the last month, they managed to launch an offensive and recover approximately 20,000 square kilometers. At that point, the IS were already 25 kilometers away from the Kurdish capital, Erbil. General Sirwan Barzani is the leader of Kurdish forces and is regarded by his men as the savior of Kurdistan. When we landed in Erbil, the Kurdish capital, High tension was in the air. In order to get in, the Jordanian aircraft had to cross over territory controlled by the Islamic State. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just landed at the Erbil International Airport. To begin with, we were taken by the president's assistance to the most sensitive place of Kurdistan, the combat front line of Mahmur, where General Barzani, the Kurdish president's nephew, managed to block the offensive of the Islamic State and begin the recovery of lost territory. The air attacks conducted by the international coalition, mainly the US, managed to continuously bomb Islamic State infrastructure and men. The Kurdish forces of Peshmerga are constantly fighting the Islamic Caliphate mostly made of Iraqis, Syrians, and thousands of foreign Arabs and Westerners that had joined them in recent years. The Peshmerga is supported by an international coalition of 60 countries, led by the US. This is the elite force of the Peshmerga army, the battalion of Mahmur. This man, General Barzani, is 45 years old, at 29, he was already ranked general, but then decided to devote himself to private business practice. However, approximately one year ago, when the Kurdish capital Erbil was seriously threatened by the men of the Islamic State, he was summoned by his uncle, President Barzani, to return to serve in the army and lead a force blocking the advancement of the military forces of the Islamic State. They're trying to, to go into Erbil to, to do uh, the same, but thanks to God, so we're just coming and, and stopping them from what well, only center of Erbil to Daesh, and that time was 25 kilometers only. What are they looking for, in your opinion? By the, they, they call this is the, our Sharia because we don't accept them. They are not Muslim, so when they are not accepting them as a Muslim, when you go occupy some places, kill the people, and we will take the women, so it's free for us. This is the mentality of the radicals. You arrested personally here for hours some of these uh, ISIS fighters. What can you tell us about the profile of these people? Man, many of them, when we talk to them, they say, so why you are fighting us? Well, what's the reason? Because we didn't go out of our region as a Kurdish territory, Kurdish villages. And they say, no, you are, uh, you are uh, helping, uh, you are Israeli, you are, you are imperialism, you are, you know, the you, you're fighting uh, behind of the, of the uh, let's say, they, they're called Kafir uh, countries, you know, the Western country. You are with them, you are not with the Islamic uh, Sharia, so because that, you have to kill you. So it's more than 100... The Peshmerga soldiers are fighting the Islamic State in a border 1,050 kilometers long. In this area, they are the only military boots on the ground, trying to halt the Islamists. Enemy fighters in sight, they're all armed. They receive great support from the U.S. drones, as well as helicopters belonging to the American, English and Jordanian forces, attacking day and night the infrastructures of the Islamic State. Oh, yeah, got him. It is hard to imagine that the North American operators of these drones are located 
more than 12,000 kilometers away in Texas or in Nevada, USA, directing the attack simply with their joysticks. The Iraqi flag can still be seen here in all official places. President Masoud Barzani, who leads this autonomy since 2005, believes that Iraq is a project that had failed and that the future solution would be to create a Shiite area in the south with its capital in Baghdad, one Sunni entity in the center with its capital in Mosul and the sovereign state of Kurdistan based on Erbil. The government's presidency is situated 45 minutes from the capital at the Salah Adin area, completely surrounded by security forces and military checkpoints. The only way to reach it is by a presidential car with a government registered license plate and security officers accompanying us closely. What is the current situation of the fight, the, the Kurd fight? against ISIS, against Daesh. What's happening now? Some of the other things are happening in the world. The people who are living in the world are living in the world. The people who are living in the world are living in the world. بلام معنا وين داعش توقع يعني تهديد داعش بردوامه تا داعش لأنه موصل بي تهديد بردوامه بي بوهرم. The world knew Al Qaeda in the last years, but ISIS is like a new phenomena. Where do they come from, and what is the most, I would say, surprising thing for you when you see the way they fight and what they want to do? هو داعش شيء تازة نيه داعش امتداد قاعدة. شوية القاعدة اعتمادي لسر عمليات اختيالات وتقنى ويترمبيل ووانبو داعش جبهة جيري كرد يعني جبهة دانو لشكري دانو بحساب خوي تنظيمات خوي بعلاني كردي وارزي كردو وأو إمكانات زوري لجيش سوري ولا جيش مالكيش بداستيان كود We need weapons, we don't ask for the troops on ground We don't ask for the soldiers on ground. We are ready to give our blood like we are doing, but just we want weapons. We ask you for weapons. I think it's, it's really is nothing as to compare with, with, the, with the Peshmerga lives. The Kurds have no doubt that one of the key holders of power in the Islamic State are former generals from Saddam Hussein's army who converted to extreme Islamists. <laughs> وهندي كشان ببيرو باوري خوانا وها وكاريان ذاك هن او كار they capture five iraqi division from the iraqi army they have everything they have tanks they have mortars they have american new weapons along the combat front on General Barzani's jeep. Each movement is secured by dozens of soldiers armed to their teeth in fear of a kidnapping attempt by the Islamic State or a car bomb attack. The convoy of protecting jeeps prevent cars traveling in the opposite direction to pass over to our side of the road. This area, the front number six, is the most important front as it serves to protect the capital. The Kurds claim to have killed 1,200 Islamists and have lost 120 men and women in combat. General Barzani decides to show to us the Martyrs Square. This is the idea, so there will be the, the monument here with all the names of our martyrs and people who are losing their life for our people to stay alive. Did you know personally someone? 
Of course, many of them. Friends or something? One of them is my friends from more than 25 years back, and he's one of the, of the heroes. He attacked by the RPG four times the tanks by his hand. The Peshmerga legions, too, rely on foreign soldiers of Kurdish origin who left their homes to come and save their nation of origin. They managed to restore part of the military equipment from the Islamic State. People in Erbil portray themselves both as cursed and blessed at the same time. They feel blessed because the Kurds are a tough, strong-willed people with enormous natural resources, including numerous oil wells, a huge amount of gas, gold mines and minerals as magnesium. But they also feel cursed because they suffer the genocide of nearly 200,000 people under the great dictator of Iraq, Saddam Hussein. And now they have to fight against one of the most radical movements in human history, the Islamic State, which aims to establish a system of life based back from the times of the Prophet Muhammad and the Sharia principles of Islam. The helicopters of the Kurdish army evacuate inhabitants of Iraqi and Syrian cities and villages. Many of them are Yazidis and Christians persecuted by the radicals. Back at the capital city of Erbil, in the neighborhood of Ain Kawa, we encounter Christian refugee camps who fled their cities in northern Iraq when the militias of the Islamic State arrived to their homes and started raping women and shooting and throwing homosexuals from the top of the buildings. In the Ayun camp in Erbil, there are 146 families who fled from Karamles, a village located next to the city of Karakos. Three families now live on each floor or in a caravan, but the memory of fear and terror is still felt in their eyes. ISIS are very cruel. Why we everyone afraid from them? Everyone. Because uh, we are Christian. We are Christian. They want uh, from us to be uh, Muslims like them. And uh, they uh, kill uh, every man or man uh, with a knife. You heard that Daesh killed two children, they shot them, and then what? You took... Yeah. What did you bring here? Only some paper, original paper, and uh, some money. We take, we take my car and came here, only this. And the whole village just went out like this? Yeah, all this. And you were in panic? Everybody just running? Yeah, in, in our car. The days are long, and in the midst of despair, the only refugee is the church Mar Elias. They all pray in Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke 2,000 years ago. This is one of the oldest Christian communities in the world, but no one knows how long they will last. Aren't you afraid that ISIS will come here to Erbil? I am uh, afraid, very, very uh, high, because uh, in one day ISIS attack uh, Erbil. I hope to travel to uh, leave the, this country. Gaziza Bapiri is a 28 years old journalist, following very closely the drama of tens of thousands of women tortured by Islamists. What do you say to the girls? in Europe, maybe in Britain, maybe in Spain, in France, that think about joining ISIS? Do not come. I will tell them to not come, to never think about coming, because they lost themselves. Why? They do not accept the woman. Even in ISIS, they said, uh, if you are being murdered by a woman fighter, 
you will never go to the paradise. paradise. And they are torturing minorities, I understand. The Pope said to me recently in an interview that there are more martyrs, Christian martyrs today, than in the beginning of Christianity in the first century. You are protecting uh, Christians. We've been here in some different camps in Erbil. What do you intend to do in that sense to avoid more killing? The first thing the Islamic Caliphate did was to try and erase the current borders between Syria and Iraq. As you can see, it's under our feet right now. That's how Abu Bakr al-Baghdad used to say he's the breaker of barriers. Inshallah, we'll break the barrier of Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, all the countries, inshallah, until we reach Quds, inshallah ta'ala. It's the first barriers of many barriers we'll break, inshallah ta'ala. The lines drawn with a pencil on the sand left the Kurdish nation divided between four different countries. Iraq, Syria, Turkey and Iran. Today they are the biggest dispersed people in the world without independence. More than 45 million people. The biggest dream in Kurdistan is that the storm the Middle East has been going through in the past four years will eventually allow them to establish their own independent state. But before that, the Peshmerga are well aware that the fight against the Islamic State is the fight of their lives.